Hello. Well, today I'm continuing with the Friday the 13th movies. Um, today is part two. Um, now, I didn't talk about last time the very end of the f first film, mainly due to the fact that it's very iconic. Um, it, you know, so many people, if they haven't even seen the film, they know of the ending. But also, I thought, you know, because it also relates to this film, because there are flashbacks to the very end of the film, you know, in this movie, uh, sort of, I guess, recapping of sorts, uh, that, you know, wouldn't be too bad to not, uh, you know, just go in into the very ending and talking about that for the last video um but uh we'll talk about that here now briefly you know of course uh jason was a kid in the first film or you know he was not the killer obviously this is Voorhees was and all we saw was basically a flashback of him drowning in crystal lake and so you know That, uh, you know, that's kind of a big reason why the f first film happened. This is where he's angry at the counselors uh, for not watching over her son because he wasn't a very good swimmer and also you know, he uh, was, uh, was sort of, uh, you know, like the foreign basically and was in need of a lot of care so uh, uh, his drowning you know makes her go insane and uh, we see the first kills in the beginning of that film and then hear about other instances of uh, things that happen between the very beginning of the first Friday the 13th and then the events of that film. And this movie, you know, Alice we see sleeping in bed and having a nightmare of the end of the film and of course uh, which she wakes up from when she was uh, attacked by Jason, you know, as a kid uh, under under the water grabbing her and pulling her into the lake, um, uh, which she also, that happens in the first film too, she wakes up after that and uh, seems to be no, there was no boy there at all and uh, might have just been in her head. Um, but in this film, we see uh, somebody's walking up towards her place, and uh, after some, like a false scare or so, we see uh, Mrs. Voorhees' head is now in her refrigerator. She's, you know, Alice is clearly terrified, but then she is killed. Um, and one thing about this film is many of the deaths that were gory are, were then cut. You know, with the first film, basically, you know, like 10 seconds was removed. Um, and that was really the most of it. You know, when you see the unrated cut of the first film, you know, there's some more gory Im uh, imagery and effects working, such as Kevin Bacon's death is probably the most, um, you know, the most uh, obviously talked about in terms of being put back into the uh, film uh, without being uncut. But, you know, this the film uh, pretty much uh, was as is. Nothing too drastic was changed, but by the second film, the MPAA was very 
harsh on it. You know, they wanted to make sure it wasn't as graphic or gory as they just made it uh, made it out to be. And there is a special feature on this in this box set where you uh, get to see. Uh, might be on the actually the discs now that I'm thinking about but anyway um this uh you know the set you know you get to see some of the footage from somebody the guy who, like did the effects basically and he made like a demo reel for like future work for people who might want effects makeup and uh, things of that nature and you know created a demo reel edited stuff that he worked on and there's no sound uh, so keep that in mind if you get this set and uh, you watch uh, all the stuff in gorier detail with more blood and stuff. There's no sound, so people getting killed, you won't hear them scream or anything. Um, but, you know, it's also not in the greatest condition because it's about like 40 years old uh, footage. Um, but it's cool to be able to see what the effects were uh, originally intended to look like. Um, so this was the beginning of sort of like the MPAA coming down on this franchise in terms of blood and gore, which as this series went on, that became a big thing. Um, of course, in general, with horror films, the MPAA was ha has been fairly hard on them, like, you know, got to cut some stuff out here and there, whether or not it made a huge difference or not, uh, it didn't matter at all, they just had to cut stuff, because otherwise it'd be like giving an X rating, back when X was rating, uh, now it's NC-17, but, you know, this, this film really, uh, I think helped make the film, the first film, even better, as well as the sequels, uh, especially like the first, this film, as well as the next two sequels, I think, you know, sort of like the lore of Friday the 13th, I think that uh, the sequels definitely helped the first film, because um, while I think the first film, uh, as it is, is excellent, um, the sequels did help uh, people not just see that as a Halloween ripoff, but set in the woods. Um, you know, um, which I'm sure many, there were a good number of people who might have thought that at the time. Uh, they may still think that, uh, but with having Jason now as the killer, you know, now you have, uh, you know, a new villain connected to the first film, not just having the uh, a survivor uh, be a, the only link. Um, and you also have, of course, new camp, uh, characters, camp counselors. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the film, of course, then uh, makes people wonder how could Jason be alive if he was dead. Because, you know, the people who made the first Friday the 13th were like, well, Jason's dead, that's it. Well, the sequel with him being the killer, well, he can't be dead. And uh, Ginny, one of the, you know, you know, new camp counselors of this, uh, of this film, uh, she's talking to, uh, To her friends and at the bar uh, they go out to and uh, yeah they like if through her conversation the story of how like he had who he must have seen his mother get killed have her head cut off and the only person who really loved him to see them die must have angered him and must have brought a rage in him and 
killed and everything. But of course, you know, at that point, oh, Jason's just a legend. You know, he's nothing really, nothing meant to really, uh, you know, worry about. You know, he was alive at one point, but died as a kid, drowned. Very unfortunate, but that's it. But, you know, he. But that's sort of their way of explaining that he. Like, didn't die. And in a way, that's kind of interesting and unique and in, uh, to think about. And, like, he might have passed out before completely dying and might have washed up on the shore on the opposite side of the lake. And so when they went to go look for Jason, they didn't find his body, which from the film, first film, that seems to be the case. His body was never recovered. Um, granted, of course, when he died, it was in the 50s, but, you know, surely they would have looked in and around the area and dragged the lake and done what they could to recover the body, at least. But, you know, that would actually make some logical sense, and I guess part of the reason Jason would have not, uh, you know, gone back uh, to the camp, even with his mom there, is because you know, he got picked on a lot, you know, because he was different, and he just, I guess, he just basically didn't, like, fit in, and so he didn't want to be, like, ready cool or anything, just lived in the wild. Um, uh, and some of the, and many of the kills in this film are really excellent. Um, of course, it has one of the most iconic deaths regarding uh, uh, two, two people in bed, you know, the guys on top of the girl, and then they're both stabbed like with a spear, like shish kebobbed, and that, of course, is one of the most talked about scenes, and as said be like one of the scenes that would have been, that people would have loved to have seen it in an unrated cut, the footage of that alone, just reinserted in how it was supposed to always be seen that as it was shot. Uh, uh, but of course, you know, the footage of this that exists now is just very old and would have been very rough to see it uh, reincorporated into the film. Um, yeah, it's not even included on the uh, alternate backing here. Oh, and the uh, alternate poster uh, cover. It's pretty cool. I, yeah, I really love this edition. This is a fantastic uh, version of this film. Um, but yeah, a lot of the kills, you know, and it's just excellent. Uh, the story gives it more of an intrigue from the first film, even, you know, it sort of builds off. It's not just, a you know, how some sequels just, they are a continuation, but they don't necessarily sort of like build, just sort of in a sense, like kind of just retread and um, and I guess in certain aspects like with you know, Jason just you know goes and kills people within you know around Crystal Lake that's the same as I guess in a sense of like the first film but with Jason added they have to add more they have to put in like some make it somewhat uh, realistic or believable at least that when you think about this film and how he could be alive, you know, from from what we've heard from the first film, make some sort of logical sense, and um, and I like that. I like how it it's it got creative and it didn't try to just uh, be the same film as the first one, and then later on the other sequels, they then try to make it interesting, you know. They did this, you know, fairly early on in the series, uh, and I 
to me at least it works. Um, now of course, you no know, Victor Miller never wrote another Friday the 13th film again, and uh, Sean Cunningham had nothing to do with the uh, franchise until uh, Part Nine. Now, uh, what they thought of, even though they didn't really want to continue on with with Friday the 13th, if they did make another one, what they were going to do is uh, basically have it be an anthology um, where every film would be different. And, you know, and that, that, that could have been, that could have worked. Um, would it have had a big momentum in terms of staying power? Would it have gone on for as many sequels as it has? I don't know. Um, But, um, I am glad they went the way they did with this film, and because the later installments are really excellent, um, I just enjoy this so much, um, you know, Ginny is a great uh, follow-up heroine to Alice. And there's also like Rick, Ted, and so many others in this film that are excellent. Um, a lot of great characters. One thing about these films and the, especially the early ones, uh, they don't just have formulaic, traditional, stereotypical. Characters that get killed. I mean, sometimes, yes, there's that one, two characters that are cliche or what have you, but they do try to make them sort of unique and stand out and try to make them like real people. And that's something I do like about this franchise. That's something about the, that Halloween did, and that Mount Elm Street did, and, you know, Friday the 13th has tried to do that also. You know, as, you know, the, the these franchises go on, you know, be sort of, you know, relegate to just kind of stereotypes of the genre. Like, get those stereotypical characters not as interesting as, like, the killers, and, uh, which is why a lot of people root for the killers. You know, you root for Jason because, you know, he's interesting, you know, he's cool, and all that. But, you know, this is something that people, uh, I don't know if people uh, really think about, you know, how many of these characters are, aren't just complete cliches. Of course, there are cliched characters in this franchise and perhaps even in, you know in, in this film you know if you really look into all the different characters sure you know yeah there's like one or two that are cliched and same in the first film but you know they're, they they make, go through the effort to make them as likable as possible um, if they went the anthology route that could continue to possibly be in every installment. You know, every time there was a new film, they would be able to, you know, just uh, make it as interesting as possible. Uh, all the characters, you know, it would be different and fresh, so you wouldn't have to just follow up with the same storyline or make it connected to the previous films, you know, you could just do a one-and-done uh, film, and then the next movie, you know, do its own thing, and so on and so forth. Um, of course, I love how uh, the story develops from the first film with this movie, and continues in the next few installments. Um, and also, you know, Jason does not have his hockey mask in this film. He you know, has, a, uh, has a bag over his head. Um... He's wearing flannel also, but 
there are people who apparently when this came out thought of like uh, the town that dreaded sundown you know the the phantom killer from Texarkana uh, which was a, inspired by a true story and that guy wore like a hood over his head to disguise himself when he went out and killed um, and there was also the elephant man which came out the year prior so also people have that in mind um, which may have led to part of the decision to later on change it up but we will get to that uh, you know next time uh, but that look is really cool and quite creepy honestly you know the, the hood and everything or burlap sack I should say <laughs> Not necessarily a hood, but, you know, just, I guess that was sort of a description of, like, the Phantom Killer in Texarkana, in some case instances. Uh, but, you know, he had a burlap sack, and that was, like, then tied with, like, a rope um, to hide his deformity, you know, because Jason was, you know, obviously still deformed, they kept that. So that's one thing that they were consistent with. Um... Of course, you know, there's also the thing with Jason actors, you know, Steve Dash did most of the stuff, and then um, Warrington Gillette got the credit, but he only did the very end with the big, bah, you know, big shocking reveal at the end, you know, that, oh, he's, oh, he's not dead, Jason's not dead at all, um, which happens in pretty much every film of these, like, well, Maybe not every film, but early on in these entries, that's sort of like a recurring thing. There's like some sort of jump scare at the end. And, uh, yeah, this, uh, <clears throat> uh, this film has one, but he, the guy they hired couldn't do his own stunts, but said he could. And they had to tie him and then swing him in to break through the glass and then you know, grab Ginny and everything and just... Yeah. It's, uh, it's really good. It's really fantastic. Uh, but that's the only part that Warrington Gillette really had anything uh, to do with, which is sort of sad in that uh, he gets the credit, but and Steve Dash had to be relegated to just stunt double despite him pretty much being Jason throughout the rest of the film when you see him running around with the burlap sack because also in the very beginning when you see his leg or feet you know it's that's actually a woman so the first time you see Jason as an adult in any way that's a woman so on the off chance you didn't know that's it was a woman on the crew who wore the shoes and the uh, and blue pants and was walking Yeah, just walking into the uh, Alice's place, towards Alice's place. Um, and there's always discussions about that too. Um, you know, with like, how did he find her place? And I saw some theories online, like you know maybe Paul, which I now notice I for whatever reason said Rick earlier, not Paul. Don't know why. There, correct myself. I meant Paul. I don't know why. Rick just sort of showed up in my mind. Because I want to just say Rick for no reason. Um, but anyway, yeah, Paul. You know, because of how later on in the film he's sort of, I guess, acting a bit odd. And how you think Jason would kill him and everything, but doesn't appear to uh, the first time they have a uh, clashing uh, as the film is winding down after Jason's killed all the other uh, camp counselors who are there while people are in town drinking and everything. Uh, you know, like, Paul, well, what's going on? Nothing. Like, some people think, you know, it might have been Ted and Paul had something to do with it. And, you know, those are some interesting theories that's, inter uh, that's kind of 
curious to think, and then this film sort of, you know, you can just kind of think of what happens and how does certain things uh, occur to have the events that unfold here happen. Um, it's really interesting uh, to think about, but, and this film is really excellent. So I think it's an excellent sequel. Really helps the story that was that was set up in the first film and grew it. Even if some of the people in the first film didn't like the idea of having Jason now as the killer. Um, and Betsy Palmer returns at the very end to do some new footage so she's not just there in flashback from the first, from the recycled footage from the first film. So that's cool. Um, yeah. Get to see Jason's shack also. And some of the people he's killed, he's brought there. Um, the one was killed in his shack, and then he just left him there. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, my overall thoughts on uh, part two. Hope it was somewhat coherent. Um, but, yeah, I'm just... I'm just really happy to be able to finally talk about these movies and you know I obviously have a clear idea of just how I'm gonna just talk about this and approach it and sometimes you just sort of go on and about whatever comes to your mind when you mention one thing then it's like okay well I'm gonna try to get back on track but you know you don't want to go on too long but you don't also want to just skip over something um, yeah so this is a great sequel. This is a great entry into the fr in the franchise. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, sorry for spoilers, but you know this is a film that's uh, really beloved, and uh, it's four years old this year. Um, it'd be really cool to see this on the big screen at some point. Um, yeah. Seeing Jason's debut as the killer is really excellent. Um, and many of the deaths are really interesting, unique, and just so well done. Um, and also, one of the victims in this film, uh, Sandra, the woman who was killed with her boyfriend with the spear on the bed, uh, she sort of becomes uh, important in... Uh, some capacity to a character in the fourth installment, and I will talk about that uh, when we get there. Um, so yeah, this is a went on a little bit longer than I intended, but that's okay. Um, anyway, uh, I hope you all have a great day, have a great weekend, and a great week, and I'll see you all next time.